Hello, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up MPAGD to create a binary every time you export the source code, which is very handy. Um, so, um, what we'll do is we'll look in the directory uh, where we're running MPAGD. Uh, I'm running it from CZX code WinAGD. Um, now, in that directory there will be a file called mpagd.ini and that's your configuration basically. Um, <clears throat> you'll see here that I've got the script editor set up as notepad and then I've got um, a batch file for the compiler ZX um, there and what that does is It runs the compiler, um, tells it to produce output for SJASM+, and then I have SJASM+, installed in um, its own directory uh, under Z CZX, and it then runs SJASM+, to uh, build the ASM file, uh, and that's all there is to it. So what we'll do is we'll do that for the Timex next. So Let's set up the Timex to do the same thing, the Timex TC2048. Uh, at present we're using the compiler, um, compiler tmx.exe. Instead of doing that, we'll set up a little batch file, tmx.bat, instead. So we save that, come out of there, then we copy the zx.bat to timex.bat. And have a look at our Timex. There. Now, okay, so we need to call the Timex compiler instead. Uh, percent one, that's just the parameter uh, that gets passed into the batch file, um, which will be the name of the project you specified when you exported the source code. So if you called your game mygame.agd, um, then that uh, gets passed into the batch file as mygame. So it'll compile that with the dash s, which tells it to. Um, produce output for SJASM+. Plus. All that does is it produces one extra line at the top of the code that tells SJASM+, plus where to create the binary. Um, and that's that's important, otherwise SJASM+, plus just compiles the, the, the file but doesn't create a binary. Uh, then the next line, uh, we're running SJASM+, plus, uh, to build the ASM file that we've just created with the compiler, and that is all we need to do there. Um, so, um, note that we don't need a file extension on the call to the compiler, but SJASM Plus does need the file extension. So, let's exit that. And now, if we run that, it will pick up our new parameters. Um, what we need to do is load a project, and let's have a look. Um, I think Diamond Geezer will do. Now, if we look at the uh, screens, uh, we're currently on the Spectrum uh, ULA+. Plus. That's what it defaults to. Uh, you can choose the Spectrum Standard view, but let's go for the Timex TC2048. As you can see, the Timex um, doesn't suffer from the same attribute problems is the spectrum. It has um, eight times the um, resolution, the colour uh, resolution. So this is Timex 8 by 1 mode. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and export that now. Um, uh, no, not that, sorry, I want to call it Giza. And as you can see, that has built the ASM. It's then gone and built the ASM and created a binary. So if I come out of there, Ah. 
I've forgotten we were working in a different directory. Um, yes, so it's created our geezer.bin there. And um, so that's how to set up MPADD to create a binary for you. Right, let's see if we can run it. Now, the start address for the Timex is 32000 because the Timex has 12k reserved for the screen. Okay, well we've got some corruption in the um, messages. That's probably a problem with the project file, so I'll, I'll take a look at that. But as you can see, we've got the Timex graphics mode running. That's loud. <laughs> so, all working properly.